Good morning and welcome to the Quiz PLC Interim Results Investor Presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company will review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it is appropriate to do so. Before we begin, I'd like to submit the following poll. I'd now like to hand you over to CEO Tarek Ramsden. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everybody, um, and welcome to the quiz uh, Half Year Results. Um, very pleased to say that uh, uh, there's been strong, strong revenue growth over the past six months and uh, uh, return to profitability. Um, group revenues increased 37%, and that reflected the stronger consumer demand for the quiz product. Gross margins also improved to a uh, 61.6%, and that was due to stronger full price sales. EBITDA of uh, 3.7 million, we'd like to say that, and a 3 million improvement year on year. Um, also pleased to say that we returned to profitability with the PBT of 1.8 million, and that was a 3.1 million improvement year on year. The operating cash flows were good, uh, of 6.5 million in a year, and that was 3 million higher than previous year. Operation hi highlights, um, demand has returned to pre-pandemic levels on a like-for-like -like basis, and uh, that contributed to a 48% increase in UK store and concession revenues. Online revenues also increased 29% to 16.1 million, and that was driven by growth in, 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 in the quiz website. Online marketing also helped increase our active customer base by 14% in the last six months. Quiz of Store Estate comprised six, to, comprised six to two stores in the UK and six in the Republic of Ireland at the end of the year. In September 2021, we had 61 in the UK and five and five in, in, in the Republic of Ireland. So there's, there's been an increase of, of, of uh, two. Um, I'll just hand over to Jerry now. All right. Hi. So I'll just take you through some of the profitability aspect that Tarek just referenced in a bit more detail. Uh, come on and talk about revenues and operating costs, uh, how the balance sheet looks, and uh, how the cash flow has been for the last six months. So, in terms of the overall summary, um, as you see there, and as you've seen referenced, um, it was very good, strong growth in the period. Um, actually, we had 62% growth in the first quarter and 15% growth in the second quarter. So it's just to I reference those figures just to uh, put it into context. There was an element of a kind of COVID bounce back in terms of the growth. Uh, but what we have seen is that the, from a light for light perspective across the, the business, whether it's the stores or online, is that we have, have gone back to pre-pandemic levels. So um, that's that's good to get back into those uh, into that area. Um, we'll come out and talk about the gross margin in a bit more detail later. But obviously, that's uh, gratifying if people have come back uh, and looking for new product and uh, focusing on that in the stores in terms of the mix of product that's been sold. Uh, operation operating costs. Uh, obviously, glad to, to see that we've got to continue to leverage off the existing cost base. In terms of the operating cost going up by 25%, which is obviously less than the revenue growth. And uh, we still believe that there's substantial uh, potential there for more um, growth um, with the existing cost base of the business. Um, last year, we obviously benefited from the, the residue of government grants coming out of COVID, uh, which is not featured in the current year. And all that's fed back into uh, the uplift in the EBITDA numbers as well as the EPS number effectively reversing uh, from the loss that you see of uh, 1.2 to uh, in profit in the period of 1.2 pence. So just to come on and talk about the revenue growth uh, in terms of that. Uh, stores and concessions, um, yeah, as I say, part of that was a kind of COVID bounce back, but made a very strong like for like in each month actually relative to pre-pandemic uh, period. So actually, there was a very strong performance in the stores. Uh, footfall was up, and also at other uh, key metrics uh, improved in terms of transaction value and the uh, conversion rates. 
online, um, more modest growth there, but obviously online was uh, trading as normal through the, or as normal as can be through uh, the kind of COVID period. So we'd expect the same level of growth there. Um, Shiraz, if you want to talk about the constituents of the online uh, business, the drivers of that later on. Uh, the international side, uh, the growth has really been driven by our operations over in the Republic of Ireland, which has benefited from um, being open uh, for the full six months. I uh, would say the kind of COVID restrictions were more prolonged uh, over there. Uh, so that's more the, the rationale for that particular increase. Our franchise revenues still remain a kind of potential for growth within the business, but you know, it was uh, modest. Uh, in the last six months, just about 4% to 5.3 million. And the mix of the business is just back to where traditionally it's been, just the half, the half the business being online or, or sorry, through stores and concessions, and then uh, the mix between online and international. Over the page, uh, I'm going to go to uh, the costs aspect. Uh, employment costs, as you see, it uh, jumped up 18%. Part of that would be obviously wage increases, uh, be the uh, national living wage increase, which then kind of cascades through the business in terms of maintaining differentials in pay. Uh, that's a, a factor there as well as the kind of continued wage inflation uh, being experienced uh, not only in our own business but obviously across the economy. Uh, but another, another factor there would be just uh, the increased activity, uh, particularly uh, the uplift in the. Uh, activity through stores and online has led to uh, more people being engaged in the distribution centre, which is a large part of the uh, employee cost uplift. The property side, uh, last year we benefited from uh, some of the continued rate rebates that um, were in place in the, in the COVID environment. Uh, last year there was effectively no rates in Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and there was a rebate provided in England and Wales. So what we have seen in the current year is their rates bill is, was going up about three million pound per annum. Obviously, that was anticipated and built into our plans, and there's about one point four of that is factored into the last six months. Uh, marketing costs has risen as you'd expect with activity, and uh, Shiraz will talk about that in due course. Uh, distribution costs, not too much to be said there. That's a mix of commission that we pay to third parties for making sales on our behalf. Uh, and, or in, is the, and the traditional carriage costs of uh, shipping goods out to customers and to, to stores, uh, as you'd expect with the cost of fuel, etc. Uh, the kind of costs are under pressure there as well, but we're looking to manage that as best we can. Just in terms of uh, our own balance sheet, um, I suppose the number on that that we're obviously going to draw your attention to and we're happy, happiest with would be uh, the cash position. So we actually entered the pandemic with just short of £7 million of cash. And as you see, at the end of September, we had just over £9 million. So it's good to uh, get the balance sheet back into the position it was before and give the business that security, um, not you know, uh, to obviously use that to grow the business uh, in due course. but. Uh, should the, the economic conditions uh, worsen over the next 12 months, we've got a good secure balance sheet there to uh, to work with. Uh, the other kind of points of note would be uh, just in a point of detail, the right to use assets. That's obviously jumped up by about £4 million. That reflects um, new leases that have been entered into. Uh, when we did the store restructuring um, in 2020, we entered into a lot of two-year leases just in terms of getting deals in place uh, to reopen the stores. Um, with uh, what's happening now is we're putting maybe our, our primer stores into longer le lease lengths and we negotiate those leases to maybe be three or five years in length and that uh, increases that number accordingly. Lastly, for me, just on the cash flows, I've kind of referenced obviously the, the headline there. In terms of where it gets to, in terms of nine million pound, uh, but there was the kind of strong cash generation from the business itself. Uh, you'll see three point seven million pound of EBITDA. Um, I said it's a million pound of that will just uh, attach itself to to rate uh, events. Sorry, 
So free cash is obviously closer to 2.7 million. Uh, but in terms of the working capital movements, uh, that was beneficial in the period as well. Uh, we reduced stock uh, by 600,000. And uh, one point just to make in stock is that we're you know, relatively pleased with the stock levels we're at. We're certainly not carrying any uh, excess levels of stock, which is some of the commentary, wider commentary out there uh, from retailers. Uh, we expect to come out the Christmas period with what we would classify as a kind of normalised level of stock. So there's, there's no substantive stock overhang in the business. So that's uh, beneficial for us. But the, the biggest move in the working capital was a 1.9 million increase in our payables uh, in the, from the end of March to the end of September. And the primary driver for that would obviously be the build up of stock for the Christmas period. And uh, some of that is reversed, as you see in that kind of lost cash balance that's been reported on the 6th of December as some of those uh, bills have been paid. So uh, you kind of normalise cash balance might be closer to about 8, 8.2 million. Uh, there was a bit of a stretch on the uh, on the creditors, as I say. So, but still a very positive number for us. And um, in terms of that, we still have our bank facilities in the background, three and a half million, even though they're not being utilised at the moment. Uh, obviously, again, that's a good security blanket for the business to have, uh, especially given they don't come with any covenants or uh, kind of onerous conditions. So that's it for me, and I'll pass over to Shiraz. Thanks, Jerry. So just on page 13, just talk about about um, online and, and offline channels. So as we've um, as we've discussed, we've seen strong demand for occasion and dressy wear, which is reflected in higher online sales. Uh, there's been about a 29% uplift in sales through the quiz website, um, and that con uh, constituted 70% of online sales in the first half. So I think that demonstrates a, a less reliance on third parties compared to sort of previous uh, splits, where it was more of a 50-50 balance between quiz and third parties online. Um, active customers have increased to 643,000, which is 14% higher than March 22 and 53% higher than September 21. So that shows, a, a sort of demonstrates customers coming back and looking for quiz product to, to um, attend events, etc., or, or, or head back out. There's been um, quite a bit of investment going on in terms of IT systems to deliver more functionality across the, the store estate and merging the online and offline channels together. So we have um, some new new features that will be going live next year, which allow us to facilitate click and collect orders from store stock. That's currently fulfilled from our DC, which is a two to three day service. So we can offer same day click and collect service um, offering next year. We'll also be able to dispatch web orders from store. So we're expecting to see some good benefits from, um, from, from that functionality. In terms of third parties, as, as we mentioned, we, we are relying less on third parties, but we still have a very good uh, relationship with Very and Next, so those partnerships are still pro um, uh, proving positive and we're happy with how that's progressing. So, so although online sales have generally been positive, we have seen that uh, the last few months have been a bit more challenging. There has been a bit of a slowdown as widely reported in the industry. Um, traffic has been a bit slow, but we've managed to counter that with increased rates in conversion and, and higher average transaction values. Um, we have seen stores hold up more resiliently in recent months, and I think that shows the advantage of having an omnichannel model. I think brands that are online only, um, as we've been seeing in the press, have been, have been found, it, found it quite challenging with high return rates and people preferring to, to go into stores more frequently recently. So in terms of the store estate, as I mentioned, their stores have been quite resilient. We are, we're quite happy with the like-for-like -like performance in stores against um, obviously last year where we had lockdowns and even against 2019, we've seen store traffic and like for likes perform um, um, quite positively. Uh, we've opened a, a store and closed one. Um, there's a couple more stores open at the moment and there's more in the pipeline for next year. We are being very selective with sites and we are looking to maintain flexible lease arrangements, um, ideally turnover rents. If not, we've, uh, we've managed to negotiate a, a level of flexibility in those leases so that we're moving to comfortable arrangements for landlords. I think we've talked about the store estate. You can see there that there's, um, between the, the year, there's been an increase in one store. And in terms of concessions, we've uh, opened another new look store and we have um, closed a few other stores 
uh, in various partners. So the overall, store, the overall state is sitting at about 66 at the moment, plus, uh, plus Ireland. In terms of gross margin, we, we've been quite quite happy with the, the margin performance despite a lot of discounting going on across the industry. Uh, we have seen a continued demand for new product, full price product, um, and that's uh, reflected in full price sales. Uh, and uh, as you can see, the margin has improved to 61.6%. .6%. We have had to be a bit more promotional, so I think customers are looking for uh, for good deals, good promotions, etc. So we have had to adopt some sort of smart promotions across the business to offer good value without impacting margin too much. I think a, a good point to sort of um, to note is that although Quiz is a value brand, we're not focused on being the cheapest. So we have been able to tweak pricing where necessary in certain categories. We, we have been able to tweak pricing up 5% or a little more if required without really uh, denting demand on those products. So I think that's somewhere where we've um, been quite successful in terms of executing a, a bit of uh, tweaking on our price architecture this year. We have built in longer delivery times to address delays in supply chain. So I think we've managed to navigate that quite successfully this year. And uh, as, as pointed out there, the, the FX contracts that we have in place have allowed us to avoid some of the, um, the currency impacts this, uh, this year. Just over the page, page 15, again, just to highlight that we, we've got a, a sort of strong infrastructure, a, a good infrastructure across the business, which uh, we believe is going to put us in a, a good place to support future growth. Uh, as you can see, operating cost increase was 25%, however, sales uh, increase was 37%. So we're quite happy with that differential and, and hope, hoping to maintain um, a bit of margin there as we, as we grow the revenue going forward. There are a number of pressures out there. Uh, it's quite widely reported the impact of wage inflation, higher energy costs, and increased freight costs, etc. We fortunately we, we fixed our energy contracts um, late last year for two years, so we, we haven't had to deal with any um, uh, higher energy costs across the business. Uh, we obviously we're looking to renegotiate those um, late next year. And again, freight we've actually seen some benefit in freight this year. Uh, container costs have come down considerably um, versus last year. Um, we, we do, we still do quite a bit of air freight. Air freight is still higher than where we like it to be, but it is lower than last year. So, although there have been some increases across uh, the business, we have managed to take the benefits of the lower freight costs. So that's been a bit of a positive as well. And uh, you know, we'll proactively manage costs uh, across the business as we as we move forward. In terms of marketing, just to sort of highlight um, that you know we've put a lot of effort into the the brand image, the brand appeal, and the product proposition, and we've we've tried to carve out a, a niche in the marketplace and and, and uh, strengthen a more of a differentiated offer. So that is obviously focused primarily on occasion wear. Um, we do have a strong dressy casual wear offering. Again, we're looking to dress women up during the day or at night, wherever they choose to go. So we stay away from basics. We were not getting into price pointed basic product, but we, we look to offer great value uh, dressing product. The, we sort of looking to get back onto the front foot of marketing. In the two years of the pandemic, we, we did bring the marketing budgets down and, and we took more of a, a short term approach in managing marketing costs. But uh, now that we've, we've seen demand return, we've, we've sort of take, we've tried to get back on the front foot. So we launched a, a campaign in uh, October with Ashley Roberts, who is who is um, a radio show host on, on um, uh, sorry, on the radio, and she was an ex-Pussycat doll. So she's quite a well-known um, figure, and we, we've seen quite a good reaction to the launch. So we, we launched in October there. We had a, a launch event in November. We had a lot of celebrities attending the event. It was very widely covered on PR across uh, online publications, and it was very well covered on social media. So I think in terms of as an awareness exercise, we were getting quiz back into people's minds. And if people are looking to dress up and go out, we were, we're wanting, uh, we're wanting quiz to be at the front of customers' minds. So in terms of the, the marketing budget, we've um, spent about uh, 1.5 million and 70% uh, of that has been digital. So we take a very ROI focused on, on marketing activity. So a lot of the digital spend is social media advertising, Google advertising, 
and we see a clear return on investment on that type of activity. We also, we're also able to now track the impact of online ads on store purchases, which is giving us some quite interesting new data to work with. So that again is an, an area that we're developing. Um, and again, we've also sort of launched some more outdoor activity. We did quite a bit of that previously and, and, and uh, look, we sort of came out of that during the pandemic period, but we've launched, um, at the moment, we've got campaigns running around London on train stations, et cetera, with outdoor advertising quite prominent. And we're trialing some new channels such as podcasts, et cetera. So it's quite a bit happening in marketing, which is really getting quiz back into people's minds. I'll just pass you back over to Tarek. Just to speak a bit about uh, current trading and outlook moving forward. Uh, total sales across October and November have been broadly in line with expectations. October was a little bit weaker than what we would have wished for, but uh, November was stronger and December has got off to a good start. Uh, UK stores and concessions across October and November, like for like performance, was consistent with pre pandemic levels. Uh, as Shaz was saying, the traffic is down, but uh, we've been selling more to customers that have been, been coming in in store. Online sales also improved through the period as demand increased. Uh, we're also pleased with sales across the Black Friday period. And as I said before, December so far has been encouraging. There's been a good demand for party wear and the casual offer is also performing well. We retain a strong cash position with 7.8 million of cash as of 6th of December. Um, and then we have total liquidity headroom of 11.3 million. Um, as far as outlook is concerned, uh, we're confident a customer proposition that our customer proposition will continue to reap benefits. Short term considerations, pleased with the performance in half month and in November, December so far. There still remains some uncertainty with regards to consumer demand over the Christmas period, period the Christmas trading period and January sales period. Uh, we are aware of, of the cost of living pressures that may impact consumer demand further in the new year, but with an improved product offer and tight cost control, we continue to expect to deliver full year outcome, at least in line with expectations. In the longer term, Consideration for longer term, we're confident that the brand and business model remain relevant and attractive to customers, and that's proven by the pickup in demand this year. Um, we have a strong financial position, which provides a good base for future growth. Uh, our focus will be on development of the quiz web sales and opening more stores where appropriate uh, terms can be agreed. Uh, we've opened five new stores this year so far. Um, closed, closed one or two, uh, but all the new stores are performing in line with expectations, and we have some new stores in the pipeline for next year. Um, so all in all, we're looking forward to 2023. I think it's going to be an exciting year ahead in many ways, but with uh, our, 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 our focus will be on cost control, product and growth will be at the forefront of our minds. And uh, uh, as I just say, we're confident about the year ahead uh, as we can be. So we're happy to take any questions now. Tarak, Jerry, Sharaz, thank you very much for your presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, please continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab situated on the top right hand corner of your screen. While the company take a few moments to review those questions submitted today, I'd like to remind you that a recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your investor dashboard. Jerry, as you can see, we have received a number of questions throughout today's presentation and thank you to all investors for submitting their questions. Could I please ask you to read out the questions and give responses where it's appropriate to do so and I'll pick up from you at the end. Technology is beating me here. I actually see the questions are showing up on our screen. Yeah, so if you just on the right hand side, can you see chat Q&A and polls or a blue button that says chat on the bottom right? Uh, yep. If you click on the blue button and then the middle one is the Q&A tab. Yeah, and so hopefully good. you see the questions yeah. there from investors. So thank you uh, once again. Back to you, Jerry. Yeah, yeah that's, need a teenager around at all times. So, okay. So we'll just go up to Tom, take them from the top. Uh, yeah, the first question is from Alan, who asks with regards to 
Uh, reflects back in the fact that our operating margins were closer to the 8 or 9% uh, back in 2016 to 18. And uh, do we aspire to get back there? Uh, obviously, the answer is yes. I think in terms of, you know, I think the the one thing we have recovered back is gross margin. Uh, that's back to where it was at, at or around uh, that period of time. Um, historically, the operating costs of the business constituted about 52% of revenues um, around that time. Uh, in the six months just gone by, it was 58%. So it's about revenue growth, I'd have to say. Partly, you know, partly about cost control, partly about revenue growth. Um, you know, I think that we went for a business that was doing 130 million per of turnover. Uh, obviously, with the pandemic, dropped down to 37 and we're working our way back. So I think primarily as the revenue growth comes, we'll be able to leverage off that operating cost base and uh, drive the operating margin. But certainly internally, uh, that's what we talk about in terms of what we target in the medium term. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So, Alan then, sorry, Alan's got another, just a follow-up question with that, which um, he, Alan's referenced the fact that the market expectations in terms from our broker uh, has £2 million of profitability for the current year, which obviously implies a kind of drop in profitability in the second half, uh, down to point two. I think where we've come from today, not raising or amending any, any expectations, it just reflects the, the uncertainty uh, with regards to the current uh, environment. You know, I think uh, whilst the last 10, 12 days have been good in terms of the prime kind of Christmas period, there's obviously um, uncertainty as to, you know, how it'll go over the next few weeks, which are key. I think what will undoubtedly come is a pressure for the industry is whilst we don't have a level of excess stock in the business, a lot of the commentary out there is with people carrying too much stock and what that might mean for discounting uh, over the next few weeks and into the first two or three months of next year. And also, I think the cost of living crisis, whilst it's certainly impacting people, I think a lot of it has been uh, about confidence in the last few months in terms of impacting people, whereas I think the reality of... Uh, having less money in your pocket and become sharper for people uh, come the new year as well. So that combination of things has led us to uh, be cautious um, with, the, with the outlook. Hopefully it's an abundance of caution, but uh, we'll wait and see obviously over the next few weeks and months. Let's see. Um, Vic, you want to Ben asks, how do you define an active customer? So an active customer is somebody who's purchased at least once in the last 12 months, it's uh, quite a common way of defining active customer in the industry. Yeah, how, Sam asks, how do you see sales progressing online versus in store? And where's your focus? And also where do you see the greatest upside? So I think, uh, as I've mentioned, um, we have seen online, I mean, both stores and online perform well in, in the first six months. We have seen online slow down slightly in the last few months. and. We've been fortunate that we are only channel brand and we're able to leverage off the, the demand in stores, which is which has been positive. I think going forward, we see uh, opportunity in both channels. We, we've sort of decided to put less dependency on third parties and put more dependency or put more focus on our own channels. So our own core channels is our own quiz website and our quiz standalone stores. So that's really where we see the opportunity going forward and that's where we're going to be looking for, for uh growth in, in both areas. Uh, Matt's asked a question with regards to store sales and online sales and how they compare to the uh, pre-pandemic year of uh, financial year 20. Um, store sales has, have been above that uh, year on a light for light basis. Um, you know, in terms of the growth, but the uplift would be single digit percentages, just to put that into context. I think online has been broadly comparable with that year. I think we've Again, seen in, in line with kind of more general commentary, I think online is becoming a bit more pressured in terms of an environment, in terms of the traffic and growth on there. But uh, we've got back to um, the previous levels, uh, but there's not been any, I'd have to say, been, uh, the growth has been stronger in the stores uh, in the last six months. But I think that's, again, reflective of the general, uh, general situation. So... 
Uh, seasonality, the question of seasonality in the business in terms of that. Um, traditionally, if you looked half on half, uh, pre-pandemic, you'd have seen revenues were very similar in the first and second half year. I think this year it might be slightly different. We did a very strong quarter, first quarter, uh, so it might be a slight dip in uh, revenues in the second half of the year. But again, that's maybe uh, taking the cautious approach. Um, the key months for us, and obviously in the second half of the year of November, December, absolutely uh, drive everything that's uh, in terms of the performance. Uh, and obviously, it's a question about the key months at that point in the year, probably through that April to June period as people buy for weddings and summer holidays or the key months in that period as well, so. Next question also asks about an active customer, so I've, uh, I've answered that. Um, bit the straight on. Yeah, sorry. Have you seen any change in online demand due to longer delivery times due to Royal Mail strikes? Uh, well, we, we we obviously use Royal Mail, but we have other carriers that we can rely on should um, any strikes happen. Uh, I think with these Royal Mail strikes, the feeling is that it might actually benefit stores. You might find people going into stores to pick up items and, and not have to rely on courier services, but uh, we've not really seen any 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 significant impact at the moment. There's a comment from William uh, with regards to the fact that uh, yeah, the position at the moment is we, we only have one broker that uh, pro provides guidance, which is the house broker, uh, Panmure Gordon, and just the expectation with regards to extending that. Yeah, we, um, that is something obviously we would want to do and we're working on, I would have to say. But, um, it, you know, it's just kind of, we will, it, we'll keep trying to um, extend that reach. Um, and I think obviously the positive performance of the business is going to help uh, bring more interest and more commentary. So hopefully watch your space. Yeah, long-term balance of sales between stores and online. So we sort of touched on that earlier. At the moment, we focusing on, on quiz stores and quiz online direct, uh, direct channels. And uh, we see opportunity in both. I think long-term online, um, we feel is... Uh, the bigger opportunity, not just in the UK, but in other international territories as well. But um, yeah, we're seeing opportunity in both areas at the moment. Uh, Daniel's got a question with the, to us with regards to intentions on dividends or buying back shares in the near future. Uh, no immediate plans on that, Daniel. Um, obviously, with the profits and the cash generation, it's going to become a, a more active uh, discussion in the boardroom. Uh, but I think it would be wrong for me to start speculating which way we're going to go on that. But um, obviously, uh, if we keep performing strongly, we'll be doing something with, uh, with regards to dividends or share buybacks. But um, again, just to put that in the context, we've only done dividends in the past, so um, we'll wait and see. And obviously, I won't, I won't uh, second guess what the board will decide on that. What proportion of annual sales and profits would we typically expect in the Christmas trading period? Um, I, I'm probably not going to go into the proportion of profits, but you know, sales-wise, it might be anything up to a, a quarter over that kind of period from November through to mid-January um, in terms of that. But obviously, I'll uh, keep my powder dry with regards to what that means for profitability, if you don't mind. Um, yep. What we anticipate using the cash for? Yep, a uh, combination of things at the moment. Uh, obviously, we're coming out of the kind of uh, bunker mentality of post COVID, so there's a uh, security in the business, but we still would have ambitions to grow the business, whether that be online and through stores as well, as well as investing in some of the technology that would help us uh, perform uh, better. And uh, also, uh, as I say, touched upon the previous point, and then. There will be a question in due course with regards to dividends or returning cash to shareholders. Um, can you get a click and collect set up for uh, these raw mill strikes? So we do have click and collect, just to clarify, we do offer click and collect. The, at the moment, click and collect is delivered from our DC to stores um, through our, our normal store delivery network. The the new technology that we were that we're deploying at the moment will allow us to click click and collect from store stock. So it can be available the same day for the customer. 
So yeah, click and collect is available at the moment. A uh, question about bank interest. Uh, the last question actually from Mark. Will the bank be able? I was. I thought the bank interest available was negligible. A large part of the six months just gone by, but you know it's maybe got up to maybe two, two and a half percent now that's available and put money on deposit. So uh, we would see the interest income uh, not become significant, but edge its way up over the, over the next six months. So, so that's my Cindy wants to take. Quickly, I think that's the questions. Tarak, Jerry, Sharaz, thank you for that. And I think you have addressed all those questions you can from investors. And of course, the company will review all questions submitted today and we will publish those responses on the Investor Meet company platform. Before redirecting investors to provide you with their feedback, which I know is particularly important to the company, could I please ask you for a few closing comments? Well, thanks. thanks to everybody for attending and uh, some very good questions there. Um, on the whole, I'll just reiterate what I said before, that uh, we're looking forward to 2023. We think it's going to be an exciting year ahead, as I say, in many ways. Uh, our focus is going to be on uh, cost control, uh, product and growth. We've been improving our product offer. We've, we've, been, we've been investing in business the past 12 months. We've been investing in, in our DC, the infrastructure in the DC. Uh, we have our, 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 our 1.8 million project for next year that we're looking at to expand the DC and make it more efficient. Uh, we're also opening more stores and uh, we're looking at a new, a new, um, 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 a new generation of shop fit. Um, we've invested in people as well. We've invested in our buying, we've invested in our merchandising, we've, we've been investing in our, in our design. So we're just going to continue to do that right through 2023 and, and we have plans to, uh, to uh, grow the business. Um, so, as I said, we're really confident that the quiz proposition will hold up well, even in tough times. Thank you, everybody. Tarak, Jerry, Sharaz, thank you for updating investors today. Could I please ask investors not to close this session as you'll now be automatically redirected to provide your feedback in order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete and I'm sure be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Quiz PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation. Good morning to you all.